Hello, this is the second video on projectiles and in this video we're going to look at how to use SUVAT to solve projectile problems and then work through a couple of examples. Right, so this is a, a way to do it. So you separate out the horizontal and the vertical components. Now obviously because it's motion with constant acceleration we can use SUVAT. So, but because there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, acceleration is zero and therefore the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity so you only actually need three of the SUVAT um, quantities you need the displacement, you need the velocity which is constant so V equals U and you need the time but in the Y direction, the vertical direction because you've got co um, constant acceleration A is always minus 9.81 oops sorry just get rid of that little, little bit there A is always minus 9.81 meters per second squared and quite often if um, an object is dropped or if it's projected horizontally if the initial velocity is all horizontal then that will mean that u is zero so quite often you, but not always uh, you can replace you, you can uh, put u equal to zero okay so in the horizontal direction it's simplified because there's no acceleration in the vertical direction, the y direction, you need the full five SUVAT quantities in order to calculate um, the missing quantities that you need. So let's have a look at a problem. Um, here's quite a simple problem that we're going to have a look at. I've got the SUVAT equations listed down here in case uh, we need to refer to them. So a golf ball is hit off a cliff with a velocity of 50 meters per second horizontally. Now it's quite useful to just jot down which quantities are x and which is uh, which are y. So this one is obviously the horizontal uh, velocity. So this is an x component. So we can put that in there in the x direction. The velocity is 50 meters per second. Okay. The cliff is 20 meters high. Now because it's um, a cliff and you've got the height of the cliff, this is obviously a vertical. Uh, component. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that displacement there into the y direction and we're going to call it minus 20 because it's falling by 20 meters. Sorry, meters actually. All right. Now is there anything else we know? Well yes, because it's it's hit off a cliff horizontally then the vertical velocity is zero. We don't know the final velocity and the acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. We don't know the time. Now I've only got one quantity over this side, so we can't actually use the x component to calculate anything, but we've got three over on the y uh, side of the equation. So what we can do is we can calculate the time, because that's what we want, how long it takes for the ball to sit, hit the sea below, using the y, the y uh, quantities. So we've got s, u, a, and t, so it's this third one that we want, um, but obviously u is zero, so we can ignore that factor there, leading us to the free fall equation. S equals a half G or A if you like T squared. So we can rearrange that, which will give us T is equal to the square root of 2S over G. And let's substitute some numbers into there. So that's the square root of 2 times the displacement. The displacement is minus 20 over the acceleration g which is minus 9.81 and you can see how important the signs are here because if you didn't get both of those signs right you're going to end up with the square root of a negative number which is not possible to calculate um, and when you calculate all that you end up with a time of 3.19 seconds I'm really sorry that this thing keeps joining up the, the dots when I'm trying to write try that again 3.19 seconds all right, so the time it takes to hit the sea is 3.19 seconds. Now this time here is the same time as this time here, and that's a key uh, clue for solving projectiles problems in two dimensions. You can just transfer whatever the answer you get on one side over to the other side to enable you to find the missing quantity on the other side. So the time it takes to travel horizontally before it hits the sea is also the time it takes to travel vertically before it, it hits the sea because obviously it's the same stone or rather the same golf ball.
So now we've done this bit of the question and we can now move on and work out how far from the base of the cliff the ball hits the sea. Now how far from the base of the cliff is effectively saying here's the cliff, here's the sea, you hit it out this way and we're trying to calculate how far it goes this way before it comes down and hits the sea. So we're looking for the x component of the displacement, right, which is this one here. So let's have a go at that. Um, now this one's easy on this side because we've only got three quantities and it's just displacement, velocity and time. So we can just use the equation S is equal to VT which is equal to 50 times 3.19 and when you do that you get a displacement of 160 meters. Alright, 160 meters and that's the answer to the second bit. Alright, so the um, the golf ball will hit the sea 160 meters away from the base of the cliff. Okay, brilliant. So that's a nice easy problem where you've got a horizontal projection. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work with a problem where you have uh, something projected at an angle. So this is slightly more difficult because obviously the vector nature of velocity comes into its own here. You've still got to work in horizontal and vertical directions, but obviously your initial velocity is not horizontal or directional. So here we've got an arrow being fired with a velocity of 70 meters per second at an angle of 34 degrees to the horizontal. So let's just draw that out and see what's going on. Um, so you've got a velocity vector somewhere like that uh, of 70 meters per second and the angle it makes with the horizontal is 34 degrees. Okay, so what we have to do here, and this is the only little extra bit that you have to do when something's projected at an angle, is you have to resolve your initial velocity vector into the x and y components. All right, so you've got the x component of velocity over here and the y component of the velocity up here. And for that, you just use Sokotoa. So um, horizontally, in the x direction over here, the initial velocity would be equal to 70 cos 34 degrees. And the initial y component of the velocity, this one up here, would be equal to 70 sine 34 degrees. That's 70 sine 34. Okay, and that's the only bit extra that you have to do. Obviously, now the y component of the initial velocity is not zero, and therefore you can't just use the simple freefall equation. So you might have to work with some other of these, or possibly that full equation there, to find what you want. Okay, but other than that, it's all the same. So this one here, it says, um, what height does it reach? So we're trying to find the maximum vertical displacement. So this is the quantity we want to find here. Um, now, as it goes up, obviously it goes up at this angle and forms a sort of arc, but it's going to reach this top point here. So now let's just draw that under here. So that's the actual path of, of the arrow, roughly, with its initial velocity of 70. It's going to reach this height here. And obviously that height is going to be vertical. Um, and so we're working the vertical direction with this component of the initial velocity and this height with an acceleration due to gravity, which is downwards. So we can put all that in. Acceleration is minus 9.81, as usual. Don't forget the signs. This is positive because it's upwards. This is negative because it's downwards. Now, when it reaches the top of its flight, the, the vertical component of its velocity will be zero. Okay, the horizontal component will still be 70 cos 34 because it's all this, this, because it's co uh, constant velocity in this direction, the velocity is going to be constant throughout its flight in the horizontal direction. The vertical direction, the velocity is going to change, and at this point here, it's going to change direction vertically, and therefore the velocity is going to be zero. So the question is, what height does it reach? So we're looking for s. We have u, v, and a, so we're going to use this, this equation here. This one at the bottom. V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. Okay, so we can rearrange that for displacement. S is equal to V squared minus U squared divided by 2A, or G if you like. You can, you can use G or, or A interchangeably. So when we substitute the numbers, V is 0, so we've got 0 minus 70, whoops, 70 sine 34 squared, let me get that little square there, divided by twice gravity, which is minus 
eight one. And when you plug all those numbers into the calculator, you end up with an answer of seventy eight point one meters. Okay, so that's your answer for that particular part of the question. This will probably be part of a larger question, but the reason I'm doing this bit is to show you what you do when you have things are projected at an angle. So, for example, this one's at, at you know uh, seventy sine thirty four would be the y component of the initial velocity. Okay, that's how you do projectiles. Thanks very much.